You have a good troop? Yeah. yeah. Because of you or in spite of you? <laughs> because of me. Huh? Because of me. Uh, how many can say honestly because of me? That you have a good troop because of me. <laughs> are you all uh, willing to admit? Raise your hand. Are you, do you agree with some of these? They say that the troop is good because of them rather than in spite of them. Oh, I think that the boys help. You, you can't have a troop without the boys. No, but I'm it's talking about how good the troop is. <laughs> is it good because of the, of these particular boys or in spite of these particular no, boys? No, I think because of them. In spite of Rick, maybe. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Do you think he's smart enough to make a judgment on this? <laughs> yeah. Do you know them well enough? They, these boys I do because we've worked on our court of honors and this is my, my gang that we, we work the court of honors and we pulled a good one off Saturday. Oh, beautiful. Uh, how many of you, a couple of you are Eagle Scouts. Which ones are those? You well, one he is those. and Wayne, the guy who uh, well, the one who left. Now, these, are, these are our next ones. Uh, and what are you, uh, first class with how many pens? Oh, I don't huh? know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you don't know. A ten. Yeah, I'm first class. I'll be star in a couple weeks. Okay. What about the rest of you? You're. I just got. Oh, you're a star, all right. And you're second class. You start on merit badges. No, there's no reason why you should. <laughs> no, but on the school after the uh, the uh, uh, outdoor skills and scouting before you ever start taking up. Uh, any of these special uh, skill awards. How many of you have skill awards? I've been fighting the battle of the skill awards. Well, <laughs> most of them just Turn around and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, the skill awards are some of the things that are you preventing you from becoming a first class scout because in your old days that you had to participate, you had to show scout spirit, and you had to earn outdoor skills. Now suddenly you have a number of merry mini mini merit badges that you have to take that has nothing to do with scouting to become uh, first class scouts and that's one of my battles and uh, I'm winning it I think. <laughs> well, we ought to get rid of the skill award. What am I suggested about skill awards? Of course we have them around by the thousands. Is that we get as many big railroad freight cars as are necessary to take all of the skill awards that we have in all of our warehouses, the Boy Scouts are now, yeah. and then put them on the longest uh, railroad line that we can find and send them out to the end of that and leave them there for 10 years. And so then we'll bring them back and then we'll sell them to collectors at $10 a piece. <laughs> the Boy Scouts of America will make millions of dollars. How do you like that? You like that idea? How many of you like that idea? I love it. I think great. Are you all in favor of that idea? Yeah, yeah. right. Oh my goodness, I'm glad there's somebody. Is that a new fellow coming in here? How are you? My name is Bill. And here's the other one. Oh, you. Who was that? There was a fellow by the name of Sam Goldwyn, I think. He said that every Tom, Dick, and Harry is called Bill. <laughs> This is <coughs> HT, and if you'd have come through Philadelphia, he would have been your pilot. We, we were looking we for you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Did you have me on the computer for no. Philadelphia? No. Um, <laughs> Mr. Owens here had you on the computer for Philadelphia, and we tracked you down, and we tried to well, get you on, you on, on the plane to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what my ticket said to Atlanta, and then from Atlanta to Orlando. Orlando. Or Orlando. Orlando. And then because of storms, they had over. Uh, and Atlanta, Atlanta, everything yeah. was just... Well, we're glad you got here, hey, what? <laughs> in spite of Eastern Airlines. <laughs> I had to look at my ticket to find out if they were, they were from Philadelphia, because then I'm really going to complain because they put me on the Atlanta plane. <laughs> Is he going back to Syracuse, too? No, he goes to Jupiter Beach oh. out here. Okay. But uh, we were down waiting. Go ahead and talk to the boys. Yeah. We were went after getting y'all. This story tells a lot about uh, Did my, my go what I've been doing about the Boy Scout within the last few years because I've been in trying a lot of things. I decided that the Boy Scout that came out in 1972 was no good because that has nothing in it about uh, the excitement.
excitement of the outer doors and about yeah. sitting around the campfire and things like that. It was all about getting one skill of water, then another skill of water, and still another skill of water. And then the, I'd already retired that 1965, and I continued fighting this idea of uh, all of these things that just the training that didn't amount to anything, the uh, so skill awards all didn't the way back amount to anything as far as becoming a first-class scout was concerned. And then finally I told them that I don't think that your your handbook amounts to anything. So he came from, he came when I became a uh, member of the Boy Scouts of America, that was 1926, <coughs> our membership was about two and a half million. When I retired in 1965, our membership was slightly more than six million. And up to that particular time, all of the handbooks had been the Hill Court handbook. The Patrol Leader's handbook, the Scoutmaster's handbook, the Field Book, and the Boy Scout handbook. And then suddenly, they went out and got somebody that's called Yankee Lovich to make a research about what the Boy Scout should really. It had to be brought up to date. That was a big thing in those days, and it had to be relevant. So they came up with a suggestion that we should change it completely. There was just too much emphasis about uh, the outer doors, because no kid in the, New in the middle of New York could ever get out of doors. Because all he has to do is to take a bus across the, uh, the Hudson River and then uh, walk up a couple of, uh, of blocks. And, uh, no, it is actually a little more than a mile. And then he would have 500 acres that he could camp on that was given to him by the Rockefeller Foundation. So there's no re reason for anything like that, but the people in the National Office actually fell for that stuff. So we started lowering all the expectations of what a first-class scout should be. He didn't have to be a first, he didn't have to be an outdoorsman. As a matter of fact, when we started the skill award, you didn't have to take anything. You only had to take three skill awards for and have put three skill awards for second class and three skill awards for first. You can pick your own. I was put on the advancement committee and I insisted that we should have at least hiking and for second class and we should have camping for first class because this idea of becoming yeah. first class without ever being in camp was rather silly. So time went by and I saw the membership go down from six million to four and a half million. We lost 40% of our membership in seven years. Then I started to wonder, <coughs> is the uh, Boy Scout sales going down? Because my last handbook that came out uh, up until 1970 was selling 600,000 copies a year. And now, in seven years, it had dropped to about 340,000. Are the sales going down because the membership is going down? Or is it the other way around, that the membership is going down because the Boy Scout handbook doesn't tell the uh, story about how much excitement you can have as a scout? So I decided to put a year of my life on the line, and I suggested to them, I'll write you another Boy Scout handbook free of charge. They told me it couldn't be done in a year. It had never been done in a year. So I did it in a year, and that Boy Scout handbook came out on the 8th of February, according to my sketchbook, in 1979, will you open the page? What edition is, what printing is that? I believe this one is the ninth edition. And will you see how many have been printed on that particular edition? The ninth edition. Uh, 3, 450, how many? 3,450,000. We have printed more than 3 million copies of this since this book came out. And then, when you turn to page nine, in all of your books, when you go home, I don't want you to do it right here. But the thing that's happening out in your camp, what is the Lenoche camp? Mm -hmm. We have a training group there of 64 men from all over this whole region. America is divided into six regions, and there are 64 men, and there are 17 leaders, 
including the national director of Boy Scouting, the national director of training, the national director of research. They're part of the training group out here because Bill Hilko has been yelling about the fact that scoutmasters should be trained to make every single promise on page nine come true in the lives of your kids. You guys know that now. Huh? Keep, keep, keep <laughs> going to have to do that now. Are you getting it? <laughs> well, of course, really, when you go back home, have you ever sat around a campfire? Yeah. Have you ever, ever had fun swimming and, uh, and uh, hiking and camping and things like that? Uh, have you ever made a meal for yourself in the outer doors? Well, have you done all of this? Well, you must have a pretty good scoutmaster. No, we do. Huh? <laughs> we do. We have a wonderful scoutmaster. You, do you think he read the page nine, or do you think he just... Why, all? <laughs> 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 you owe me $20 now. <laughs> How? <laughs> you know, I how does he owe you twenty dollars? After I uh, after I just plugged him with all these good comments. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, guys. No, I think well, he's giving you exactly what. But I challenged him. I challenged him today at a very special point, because he had been taking wood bats training, and I challenged him to tell me. Just give me one example of one activity that he brought home and put in effect in his troop the next week. And he couldn't tell me. So that's why we are running this wood badge course, because this is Scoutmasters here wood badge course. Am I boring you or are you interested? How many of you have been bored with all of these explanations? Huh? Well, even that fellow there, are you interested in what I'm telling you? You'll learn more about it in the next couple of years. So we have people who are, are taking this course, the people that I mentioned to you, and they, as part of the syllabus, and I've been sitting up nights because I sent the, uh, the program for Thursday <laughs> and Friday. <coughs> I sent that, that to them by uh, overnight express mail on Tuesday. <laughs> so, so I hope that <laughs> I'm supposed to write it so that it can be understood by any good scoutmaster and to explain everything in detail to a good scoutmaster. I'm not going to give that definition. That'll sound about the scoutmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, would you like, like to tell them something about the early days when you uh, and with, with Lord Baden-Powell? Well, you know, I'm more interested in what's happening today and tomorrow, okay. but I'll right. come back to that. Okay. How many hours do you have to spend with me? As many as you have to spend. You're the one that we're worried about. Well, I'm the one who has to get the scoutmaster speech written tonight before I go to town. I'm not worried about him. He's the most energetic guy in the room. <laughs> yeah. So, but I want you to know that when you, as you go up, the the most important thing that can happen are, are you having a good time in scouting? Are all of you having a good? Time? Well, you must be here to come around here this time of night because I've been insisting that one of the main functions of the Boy Scouts of America is to give a a good boyhood to every boy, or that he can really think back of it. I just had the 50-year reunion with the boys in my troop going back to 1936, and, <laughs> and they told me about some of the things they remembered about the troop, and they really filled me in with mm -hmm. all of the crazy and idiotic things that they did, and they enjoyed every one of them. Did you ever go hunting for bullfrogs along your lake in, at night? <laughs> and come back with bullfrogs and make a midnight meal in your patrol with the mm. frog snakes. Did you imagine doing it? No. <laughs> no. We, we had a snake one time. Huh? Yeah. We had a snake one time, but we had well, a snake bullfrog on Well, I came into a, I was born just at the right time. I was born the last year of the last century. I was born on the 6th of August, 1900. And in 1900, I was born in Denmark, by the way, and that's a rather important thing. I was born in Denmark, and in 1910, Ben Powell's book that had been published in England in 1908 was translated into Danish. And he said a very simple thing in those days. It was very easy to become a Boy Scout. All you had to do if you wanted to become a Boy Scout, you get together a few of your friends, you make a patrol, and you go out and do scouting. 
They had trouble in England because the kids in London went into Hyde Park, one of the big parks in London, and they started cu cutting down trees. So Ben Powell did one of the greatest good turns that anybody has ever been because he was a, a general at that particular, a major general. And with uh, the World War just a couple of, of years ahead, he might have become a field marshal even, but he gave up. He just cut off a magnificent military career to give himself up to the Boy Scout movement. And that particular book came out in England in 1908, and that's what started all of these trouble. And he retired and became just the chief scout of the Boy Scouts in 1910. Eventually, of course, in 1920 at the Jamboree, the boys who were there, and I happened to be one of them, proclaimed him chief scout of the world. And I know there are a lot of people who have been trying to become the conquerors of the world. Uh, we've had a few of them. You may have heard about what well, Mussolini was before your time, and so was Hitler. But there were some who were trying to become the conquerors of the world, and they didn't get away with it. But Ben Powell, just spontaneously, he happened on my birthday in 1920 that we proclaimed Baden Powell chief scout of the world. How many of you have heard about Baden Powell? Huh? Yeah, oh, yes. Who was Baden Powell? Yeah. What did he ever do? He found a scout. He found a scout. Well, you're pretty good in the world, yeah. So uh, he said in that book, if you want to become a scout in the Danish translation, all you had to do is to uh, start a patrol and go out and do stuff. And that's what I did when, in January 1911. With some of these different things that are happening and go out and just have a good time. What did that metal plaque say again? The, the what? The uh, metal plaque in Latin? It says, see monumentum experience. <coughs> if you want to see the man's local me memory, then looks around you. And that was dedicated to the architect of, uh, of St. Paul's, but that fits just as well with Baden Powell because you're the ones who have to see to it that uh, his monument is continued for the for many, many, many years to come. One of the things we were speaking about as we were driving it, it's a long drive from here, for, was that. Uh, now, where are these books? And where okay, he'll be signing your books if you want to pass it up. Was about you boys like next Monday when you get back in school to tell other classmates what you did as scouts this weekend that you went to the aircraft carrier advertised for scouting as he pointed out earlier how the decline of the movement is and well that was one of the things we discussed the whole way from the airport that we are in competition and we've been in competition with the uh, little league and you know their playing field how much what size that is a regular baseball field is 90 by 90, and for boy size it's cut down to 60 by 60. And the football field is 160 and 360, that's cut down to boy size. Everything in uh, Little League and football is cut <coughs> down to boy size because they were never invented as boys games, they were invented as adult games, cut down to boy size. The only game in the world that was ever invented for boys was a Boy Scout movement. Yeah, and we have yeah. to go around and toot that to everybody say, well, we don't have 60-60 diamond to play on. We don't have a miniature football field to work on. We have the whole wide out of doors. We can even go up to, uh, to the uh, aircraft carrier then. Whenever we feel like going and we can go down to Key West and we can go camping in the, the uh, what is it? The, the yeah, we can go camping. We have thousands and as a matter of fact the Boy Scouts of America is I'm not quite positive but I think we are the largest <laughs> private uh, real estate owners in the country wow. because we have 420 uh, councils all of them with immense camping areas we have 184,000 acres out in Fillmore we have all of these other things. And, uh, have you been taping me? Yes, sir. Wonderful. 
Somebody has been smarter than somebody. I'm getting a copy, am I? <laughs> We've also been taking video pictures, too. We gotta, we're going to know that you were here, and every boy here is going to remember meeting you. Well, as a coach, you I'm know sorry that I've had to wait 35 years. As a coach, you know that you can't do any uh, public demonstration of those without the permission. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good assignment. Right there. <laughs> Golly, I'll have to get some things copyrighted and uh, protected. <laughs> <laughs> they keep it sneaking up on me today. You know, you, you couldn't do that in Hollywood and get away with it. You'll be sued right. for video with anybody <laughs> privately for the show up. Do you really have me? Or you have yourself all a fellow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We will try to remember that. We have but some. as long as I get copies of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. There's okay, well, these cakes and books. drinks over here for you guys if you, for while you're waiting to talk to him or get your book signed. All right, I need somebody to help me. Well, you'll be my green power. <laughs> yeah. And I'll instruct you. It should only take you about five minutes to <laughs> five different uh, attempts before you find out what I want you to do. Okay. <laughs> should I get him a copy of the finished product? So now, follow me. I am going... The best space I have in that whole book is like this. So I go like this. That's that. Now this signature, where does that, where do these green bars go? Right through the name. What part of the name? Hmm. Does it go that way? <laughs> <laughs> do they go that Look, way? Look, Mike, they, they, go, they go horizontally here. Well, you'd see if you can imitate that one just over the bill part. Okay. This is not instruction, this is motivation. <laughs> <laughs> like, this. Like, like this. Yeah. Like no. <laughs> Fifty years from now, he can tell his children he was a green bar. <laughs> My goodness, he did it. Good job. All right. All right. All right. All right. There must be a skill award for that, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a special award when we come to the end of it. When he has a number of times, he gets to put two of them on his own arm. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get them on his own book. Now, who else? Is this yours? That's mine. I think I'd better do it with this one. Sure. So that those remarks about the... Uh, Isn't it wonderful there's that much space on that page? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he can write and talk at the same time, but if you have any questions or anything okay. you want to ask. You were a good friend of Norman Rockwell also? I had the last interview with Norman Rockwell that anybody ever had. Yeah. I met him first when he was connected with making the... Uh, the paintings for the Boy Scouts of America because I was supposed to be an expert on badges and insignia in those things. So whenever he announced that he had the painting finished, the little court would sit up and check to see if it looked if that badge was actually two inches below that shoulder seat <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. So I had a chance to meet him once a year for several years. And then finally when they wanted to get a book about paint, you know, Norman Rockwell's contribution to the Boy Scout. They couldn't find any better one than me because I knew all about it. And I said I want to interview him. And I was told he can't, you can't, because he doesn't give any interviews to anybody else. Mm. Oh, he any was actually <laughs> suffering of Alzheimer's disease oh, toward the end. Uh, for any of you guys that forgot your books, there's a few pieces of paper yeah. that were around here somewhere. You were saying earlier that you wanted to do away with some of the merit, I mean, the uh, skill award system type thing for 10 years or so. <laughs> what what would be your ideal approach to scouting right now? Or is that on page 9? My approach is uh, that scouting and have won the skill award have nothing to do with each other because the skill awards about, well, look at the skill
skill awards and one of the pick up one of these books and tell me look at skill awards. What do you say about page nine? About page nine is the same thing. <laughs> well, you well, pick you up one of these look, books and look at the skill awards. Well, you do it right now. Well, they're the very end there. Okay. All right, give me the names of the skill awards. Uh, camping, citizenship, communication. What is citizenship uh, to do with the... Uh, we used to have just knowing about the American flag and singing the... Um, but uh, this is a civics, uh, a miniature civics uh, merit badge we mm -hmm. have there now. They're all mini merit badges because they just lead into a complete merit badge. What's the next one? Uh, communications. Can you do that in the outer door? You can if you stretch the uh, point there. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't very much to do with scouting. What's another one? Community living. Community living. Is that in the outer doors or is that indoors or oh, right around, around you? Town. Well, what about camping up here in the beginning? Well, camping we have because that was from the Advancement Committee. We, that's what I told you before. We got hiking and cooking and... and first day conservation? Summer. Conservation fits into the outer doors. Cooking? Cooking fits into the outer doors because I've got it in there. Environment? <laughs> Environment is stretching the thing a point because a boy who's ten and a half getting into scouting having to come up to a mini, mini, mini merry badge on Bobby of Elements. Have you read the requirements? Mm -hmm. Family living, is that something you do in the outer doors? No, sir. <laughs> First aid fits in all right. What is the other thing? Hiking. Well, hiking fits in all right. Physical fitness. Have you read the requirements? Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. What, well, do they fit into the outer doors? In a way. In a way. Yeah, that's a trouble. Requirements we have until we got the skill awards. I had them actually written out, typed out, and they took three and a half pages of regular single space thing. And then I had them all typed out with the skill awards, the minimum skill awards that you can use. They took seven and a half pages. Most of it about things that haven't anything to do with scouting, and most of the things just do this skill award and then do something else, do two other things that haven't anything to do with the outer doors. And those here two other things are the ones that I've been battling for. Against, rather. Wouldn't those two other things make kind of a well-rounded scout, though? It's nothing to do with outdoor scout. No, you want outdoor yeah. scout. Well, we want the boys to become first-class scouts as quickly as possible, <coughs> because that's the only way we keep them in scouting. And over the years since 1972, we have made it as impossible as we possibly can. The first requirements we had in the Boy Scouts of America filled less, filled less than any of these skill award things that you have here. It was less than those that we had for first class in the old days. All right, let me sit there. I want to get a picture of this because I have to. What did I do about this one? Did I sign it? <laughs> no. The name, read the year. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? It's the green one. I had the green print. You know, he was giving me a great compliment because I must have been a very precocious <laughs> boy. You know, first, that was an addition that was based upon the one in 1912. I was 11. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is one of the original would, ones. Would you put the key on there and then put your name? You can go across all the page you want. <laughs> If somebody will come up to me and say, well, don't put my name in my book, because I really don't need it. And so I thought you will promise to do that, because I don't want all of them to come back to them and say, well, you did that for Keith. Why no, they, they won't. I, I promise you they won't. <laughs> <laughs> they won't allow that. Keith is a special case. That's what there I'm no about. The You're minute right. I start writing dedications, <laughs> Then it's taken me five time. times the length of time because then I have to say, well, so what, is, what is your name really? 
the accent you have, I cannot understand. <laughs> and then I say, well, get a piece of paper and write your name, and then I'll try to spell it out if I can read your writing. <laughs> well, I better make that rather emphatic because now the trouble with this one is that there are two places there. That picture's rare, fairly No, that was when I was 65. <laughs> They have to write it twice in here. Anybody else? Uh, no, I still. Yeah. Can you, can well, are you going to send some of these boys home before they? Uh, well, they don't have school tomorrow, to and they're oh, going to ride the bus, so they got plenty of time to sleep. Is that your excuse for hanging around and keeping me from getting to bed? Yeah, we're going to keep you. <laughs> Remember, I still have to write the story of the <laughs> scoutmaster oh, has to tell in Sagilmo tomorrow before I go to bed tonight. Yeah. Whoa. Because I'm going to pick up at 9 tomorrow. Right. So you didn't have anything to do with No, don't say write about it. <laughs> 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 1948, this is not a year right in here? Kind of hurt. No, the... This wasn't written by anybody. This was collected by somebody. It was edited by somebody. And it was written by any number of the experts. And the green one? The, uh, this is, you were in Scouts in this time. Anybody else? Well, that came out in 1928. That was the first American Boy Scout camp. Well, this one says 32. Copyright 1932. That came out a year ago to the United States. That's okay. See Lindbergh over here? Yeah. And in the original painting by Norman Rockwell, that's a conquistador, a Spanish conquistador, but he changed it. Now, this is going too far. Well, you won't sign them, Well, I've gotten into that bad habit of anything that's put up in a big nose, I just automatically sign. I'm better hide the rest of it. If you know which side of the spotlight you stand on, you see that I get one in now. You won't <laughs> sign my book. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, do they sign your one? So, I, I would like to mention one thing. We, can you take a picture? Yes, you do. Well, I have to re sign it. Yeah. yeah, he's getting his camera lit here. When you're done, can you throw one more of those? We didn't have, I, did, I forgot to get you a yeah. troop hat, but here is an official patch of our troop, and we really do thank you very much. For a job well done. You've, you've been the Boy Scouts of America a long time. No, it probably hits just my voice, but these guys really, and I do want to make sure that you know that's mine again. What's your first name? Michael. No, I don't have a book. Where's your boy, Ray? There's cake and uh, whatever you guys, there's Pepsi and stuff. So there's cake and soda. Carolyn does more than any of us so what do you make that up to read? I says to Mike for your job as a good green bar. Oh right. Yep. Thank you. That's your official title. Now remember that whenever take, anybody takes a photograph of me, I expect to we'll say half a dozen, eight by <laughs> ten. <laughs> May I ask you a question, sir? Well, that's what I expect. I never so get them, but that's we're what I expect. We're going to see if you get some pictures. Of Ray here. has a question here. Go ahead. Years ago in... in uh, the requirements to advance in rank right in the advancement was uh, um, compass reading and map reading, uh, signaling like Morse or semaphore. 
14 that, mile high. Yeah, all that. Then it was sort of dropped out of the advancement and put into a merit badge form under communication. No, it was all in the merit badges, but we put many badges into the advancement program. That, that one, that's what that's happened when, that's what I'm talking about, the skill awards. There are many, yeah, many, there are many merit badges. We didn't have skill awards back in 41. Of course we did. We were smart enough to keep it a straight way up. That's what I said. You had the right participation. If you really showed up at troop meetings and patrol meetings, and if you showed the right spirit, and if you had all of these outdoor skills and could help for first aid and a couple of other things of the, uh, the of service type, then you become a first class scout. You cannot become a first class scout today unless you have nine mini, mini Mary badges. And that's what's killing the Boy Scouts, one of the things that's killing the Boy Scouts in America. And in 1988, the national program will be get them up to first class, because that's the only way we can hold them. And that's why we have failed completely. That's why we have lost the boy. The first thing a boy does when he becomes uh, a member of the troop is he has to take the Citizenship Skill Award. We don't have to take them out of doors. We put them to work on the miniature civics merit badge. And that's not the reason why the boy wants joins. He wants to get out of doors immediately. So we tell them to sit down and learn the rules and regulations of the, of the rights and regulations of the United States of America. And that's... Visit somebody at a home. He used to be hoisting the flag and knowing how to salute the flag and sing the Star Spangled Banner and so on. You better not get me worked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on your side. Well, that's the kind of speech I'm making at the Boy Scout Advancement Committee these days. Fortunately, I have a chance to, to spot my stuff nowadays. That's why I'm getting away with that. You can't imagine how many people are, well, it's described in the uh, in this book about the uh, Bill Hillcourt being the burr under the saddle of the National Law Office for the last It's like learning how to use the knife and an axe. That was all part of the qualifications to advance the yeah, land. Now it's a totem chip card. You know, what we used to call... Let us see where the... The tenderfoot knots. You remember tenderfoot knots? Oh, yep. I think I can handle them. They are the uh, <laughs> camping... Skill award requirements to become a first class scout. You're not supposed to learn a tenderfoot class nowadays. That's something that you do when you come to the last stage of being a first class scout. You can't, you can't become a first class scout unless you know how to tie the tenderfoot knot. Very good point. The first thing that you do in a troop meeting is to use, if you have ropes and a stave, then you can have a a true program that has to do with the outdoor class. So what you're saying is you get the boys interested in the outdoors and then move them on into the civic end of it. Get, get a Except good hold on. The, the Mary badges were never, never meant to be anything that you do at a troop meeting, for example. And in the program helps that we have today, you bring in experts on a couple of Mary badges and they spout for 20 minutes and then somebody, is, some of the boys are signed up for that while somebody else is way behind that stage and somebody doesn't even know what they're talking about, being bored in two other directions. So keep a separation in the merit badges? That's, that's one thing I would like people, you know, I'm still calling them kids when they become, uh, when they join the Boy Scout. He, want, he comes to his first troop meeting and he's bored because they're using the program and the program helps. So he's bored stiff. And then he decides, well, this may be an off night, so I'll give them another chance. <laughs> so he comes to the second troop meeting and it's exactly the same. No talk about the outer doors. We're not going to even have a hike or anything like that. So he says to himself, this is impossible. So then he decides to do something about it, and he comes, and that's where I want these boys to be smart. He comes to his third troop meeting, and it's just as boring as the other one. And then I want him to go up to the scoutmaster, and I want him to put out his still grimy hands and say to the scoutmaster, I want to give my registration feedback 
because I am not getting one. It says in the page nine that I should be. <laughs> 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 I stay in my last for weeks and leave for the history and stuff like that. Well, have you had enough or do you have more questions to answer? Have, have all you guys had some cake? There's, I can't believe you're not leaving to go eat cake. You're, I know. You're doing a great job you now. Are. See, they won't even go eat cake. What am I doing? <laughs> great job. <laughs> you have to do something <laughs> right for no, 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 no. <laughs> But do you all believe in what I'm saying? Oh, no. That's yeah, important. Yeah. Part of it. And that's why I have trouble when I get in with uh, with boys and uh, leaders and so on. I, just, I, I have to agree with you. I have a gospel that I preach. We, we get out there, we go once a month and sometimes twice a month to do yeah. things. So. We didn't learn anything. That well, I don't want to talk about that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I obviously learned the wrong thing, but... You know, Bill, I think we're lucky in this area. And that the, with, I know with my troop, as well as Troop 46 and many of the other troops, we have the facilities and the time to get out of doors, just like page 9, to get the boys out and make them learn what it takes to grow up in the outdoors. Well, I'm going to tell them in temp to, uh, tomorrow that I met the, uh, a good troop and a good scout master, with a, and they actually follow the principles of the scout. Well, let me, let me, let me say this about that. That's true. Uh, this troop, I think, is founded on the principles that you laid out. And, uh, and we, that's, I think that's what makes this troop special and, and unique to scout troops is because they do work for the boys, just like tonight. Now, like I said, I know you're tired, you've been flying all day, and, and these boys are here because they're anxious to see it. And you see our fathers involved in well, our You see what too. the adrenaline can do to a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm happy about this occasion, though, because uh, this is an example of what I what I've been preaching and what I believe in. Nowadays, uh, 
They tell me in the national office, the trouble with you is we don't know where Baden Powell ends and where you start. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a compliment. That's, that's, that's a compliment. It's, it's so easy, but the movement is...